Yo, golfing fans, welcome back to the channel. Brought to you in association with betting.co.uk. I'm Ginger Joe and I'm back with my weekly golf selections for you to take a look at. And in this episode alone, we've got the one event to turn our attentions to on the PGA Tour. We've got the Wyndham Championship at Sedgefield Country Club and I really can't wait to see how this one unfolds. It is going to be another low scoring week, but there's a bit more importance to this event this week that I will go on to for you in a moment. If you're new to my channel, please do hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a great deal. And by doing so, you will be notified of when my selections do first and foremost come live here on YouTube. But of course, you can always check out my column over on betting.co.uk. And I'll pop a link in the description below in case you want to come over and join me there as well. Now, before I go on to the selections, a little bit of a background about myself. I'm an ex-tour professional, so I've got some playing experience. And I'm now putting that to good use by trying to find you the player that I think is best suited to the course every single week that we find on tour. And I've got a decent squad for this week with the lowest price actually being at 50 to 1. So some pretty nice shouts for this week. And hopefully we can get ourselves a little bit more profit heading into the rest of the season. Now, as it stands, if you back to my selection since uh, January at level stakes, you would be at 823 points in the profit. And again, we were a little bit unlucky last week, as we were in the Open Championship. In the Open Championship, I had Sepp Straker at 200 to 1, finished second, behind a runaway winner in Brian Harmon. And this week, just gone in the 3M Open, we had JT Poston finished second at 50 to 1, behind a runaway winner in Lee Hodges. So a couple of runner-up spots, but we're well in the profit, and hopefully we can get ourselves back into the winners and for this week. So this week we head to the Wyndham Championship at Sedgefield Country Club here. 7,117 yards, a par 71. And this is going to be another really low scoring event, but it's got a lot more importance to the usual one this week. So we can step aside from the boring golf. There's some important things to watch out for this week. It's the last chance for the players actually to get into the top 70 of the FedEx Cup points before they head into St. Jude's next week. And there's actually some really big names outside of the point system at the moment, notably Justin Thomas, who's currently 79th. So he definitely does need a big performance this week to get himself back in. But his game's been way off lately. His confidence is really low. He's got the pressure on this week as well. And at 33 to 1, I don't think it's worth taking a punt at those prices but not only Justin Thomas this is a really big opportunity for some maidens that haven't won on tour some good players to still get themselves into the FedEx Cup points and there's some big opportunities for this week but you're going to have to be switched on for the whole four days here at some low scoring events and as we've seen in recent times if you're going to hit the front early on it's actually not necessarily too much of a bad thing. Now, I've got a six-man squad for this week. Again, a few extra selections than usual, but just the one event to turn our attentions to and big prices. I thought they were worth getting into the squad nonetheless. As usual, I advise the each-way singles to the 10 places, which I use with Labricks and Corals. And of course, the... Um, uh, level stakes are always as vi advised as usual. I'll bring you these selections in strength of order. And we start off with my best selection of the week. And that's going to be Taylor Moore at 50 to 1. You can still get 50 to 1 with Bet UK and Unibet. But I think you need to blame Ben Coley as well if you're not getting the 50 to 1. Because he put him up this week. And as you know, there's always a bit of a market move on Ben Coley's selections. But Taylor Moore, he's world number 51. 27th in the FedEx. So he's well within the mark to play at St. Jude's and the other events for the following weeks. And he's actually just been enjoying a really fun find a season on tour becoming a very classy player Taylor Moore and to me looks the best candidate suited to this week very much so he tends to excel in these low scoring events as well he broke his maiden by winning the Valspar in really good fashion and he's had plenty of top five finishes since then as well he's more than capable he's got the game to suit this course as well very classy player really good at these low scoring events and 50 to 1 is way too big about um, Taylor Moore's chances before I go on to some of the other selections, just a thing to note for your home studies as well. I think a couple of the events that bode well for this week as well, if they played well in the John Deere, the Travellers, the Canadian, uh, maybe even the Rocket Mortgage, those sort of courses will suit very well to those players coming into this event in similar form. Really good low scoring events and pretty tough courses at the same time. You really need to be dialing them with your approach play. And of course, that putter needs to be rocking as it always does. But selection number two is going to be Chris Kirk at 50 to 1 as well. World number 41, another player well within the FedEx Cup points at the moment. He's set in a 26th position and he's a five time winner on tour. He actually won the Honda Classic in February to make it his fifth win. And similarly to Taylor Moore as well, I think he's going to be really well suited to this course as well. Not only has he won this year, he's had plenty of top fives. He finished top five in the Sony, the American Express. He's got some really good other scoring uh, events to go with it as well. He's a very good iron player, Chris Kirk, which I think. Think of bode well for him this week and he's pretty decent with a putter as well 
He did miss the cut at the Open uh, a couple of weeks ago, but he finished with a really good round two, and I'm willing to give him um, a second effort there. He wasn't exactly a player that's got the experience on the Lynx course, and he'll be much more comfortable on home soil. I can see it being a really big week for Chris Kirk this week. 50 to 1 about Chris Kirk's chances. Selection number three is Mark Hubbard at 70 to 1. World number 85, 58th in the FedEx Cup standings. A player that hasn't actually won on tour just yet, but he's been very consistent this year to get himself into 58th uh, spot in the FedEx Cup standings. And he's just been getting better and better as the season's gone on. He finished really well at the John Deere and also at the Canadian. And he's also got four top tens in his last eight starts. He really is a player in form and he is going to break his maiden soon enough. It just wouldn't surprise me if this week was that week. Um, going to expect another solid performance again from Mark Hubbard. He's nice and consistent. Really good with a putter, decent with approach play, good enough off the tee, got plenty of open spaces in this course. I think 70 to 1 is too big for the credentials that Mark Hubbard has on offer. Selection number four is Ches Revia, 125 to 1. 100 to 1 generally, though. World number 80. He's 98th in the FedEx Cup's uh, points this year. And he's a three time winner with loads of experience. He seems to have been around for forever, Ches Reeve, but he's been really good form so far this year. And he actually played really well in this event last year, too, with rounds of 64, 63. 63 and 71 some really really good golf and as mentioned he's got three really good finishes in the john deere the travelers and the canadian as well i think everything bodes really well for Ch uh, ches Reeve this week at a triple figure price very good approach play very good putter quite significantly better than most in those two departments as well 125 to 1 a good performance this week will get him from 98th spot in the fedex into the uh, fedex point so at that sort of price What's not to like about Ches Reeve's chances at 125 to 1? Selection number five is Justin Lower at 200 to 1. World number 188, currently at 100th in the FedEx points. A maiden on tour. Really surprised that he hasn't actually won on tour. He does need a big week here and probably needs to bounce back from a few ropey performances. But he's played really well this year in the likes of the Rocket Mortgage. I think he had a top 10 finish. Um, I think he finished tied eighth, in fact, in the end. And seems very much at home on that sort of track as well. Expect him to go really well this week. And I actually thought he was going to be half the price coming into this field. So it is a bit of a... Um, uh, price dynamic why he's up this week but I actually think he's going to do really well once again he started well in the 3M Open last week he also finished well in the 3M Open last week a little bit ropey in between but he's in back to form and I think at this sort of price you've got to take a chance on him at 200 to 1 good short game to go with it for Justin Lower 200 to 1 I think it's a really big price about his chances and then my final selection of the week is going to be Zach Blair at 250 to 1. Surprised this lad hasn't actually won on tour yet. A really, really smart player on his day. And he's done that well that he's managed to get himself into the 90th spot in the FedEx Cup spots without actually winning uh, an event as well. And I think he actually could sneak into the top 70 with a good week this week as well. He was second in the Travellers and he actually got beat in a playoff. But he got into the playoff by shooting a uh, 62 final round and then only just got done late on. I think that experience is going to start to bode well for him. He seems a much more consistent player since then. And in the 3M Open, he finished 13th with rounds of 69, 66, 72 and 64. He knows how to go low. This lad is going to bode really well for Zach Blair this week. And his best, his best attributes by far are his chipping and putting. So again, something that you're going to really be required this week if you want to go low. And he is playing better in the stronger events as well. It's a very important week for some of these players out here on tour. And Zach Blair is definitely my dark horse for this week at 250 to 1. Now, just to give you a recap on those selections, we've got Taylor Moore at 50 to 1. We then have Chris Kirk at 50 to 1. We've got Mark Hubbard at 70 to 1. We've got Ches Reevy at 125 to 1. Justin Lower at 200 to 1. And then we've got Zach Blair at 250 to 1. A six man squad for this week. But I'm hoping we can get some nice place money, maybe even a win to take into next week's St. Jude's Championship. We've got some really good golf coming up in the next few weeks. And this is only just the start. Of course, the DP World Tour will be back as well in two weeks time. So I really can't wait for this one to get done and dusted out the way. But hopefully we can take some nice profit into the remaining, remaining events of the year. Now, I hope you're enjoying my content. As mentioned, if you aren't subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button. It does help me out a great deal. It's completely free to do so. And also, if you're looking for a little bit extra at the Ginger Joe Racing Show, then all you need to do is drop me a message on Twitter. You can come and join the Ginger Joe Extra Plan, and I'll send you the details via direct message on Twitter. 
Thanks everyone for tuning in. I really do appreciate the support now and the continued support throughout this season. I'm very glad that we're in a 823 points profit for the year. That obviously makes it seem very much worth it. All I ask, if you don't mind, by clicking the subscribe button below this video, that would be a great help indeed. As mentioned, my article from betting.co.uk is in the description below with a 750 to 1 shot, which has now decreased in value by quite a lot. However, keep an eye on my Twitter because this happened when I put up Tristan Lawrence at 600 to 1 as well. As soon as he was put up, he got suspended in the betting and was cut to 300, 400 to 1. And after two rounds, he was actually in the top 10 as well. So we had a really good shout with him. And a similar thing has happened to Tyson Alexander. You can still get the 750s, but he's pretty much 500 to 1 and 400 to 1 to the remainder of the uh, bookies out there. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Good luck with your bets. Let me know who you fancy for this week as well. And obviously, uh, good luck with all of your selections for this week. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you all real soon. Bye for now.